Tango Cushion. Well, Ray, a happy Easter to you and all those people out there in football world watching this program today. Yesterday at uh, Windsor Park, the uh, Blues suffered a very uh, severe defeat, in my opinion, uh, when North, with a uh, very competent display, uh, brushed them aside and uh, recorded a very sound victory. It was a uh, disappointment for the Launceston side, who's had an excellent start to this year. Uh, but I do feel that they've got to closely analyse the composition of their team and perhaps make some alterations most assuredly on the forward line, where I believe that uh, they need a bit of strength in the key positions. I feel that uh, Bailey in particular, a brilliant footballer and a, and a, a real top player, uh, really has got a, a ter terrific burden at centre-half forward. In my, in my opinion is he's too small for the position and he would be much better served on a half-forward flank where he'd be able to exhibit his skills without the pressure that uh, he finds uh, in combating uh, stronger and taller opponents in the, in the key position of centre-half forward. Yesterday uh, was an illustration of this because Spearman uh, had a great duel with Bailey, but Spearman was the clear winner on the day and one of the great uh, rebounding uh, moves for North in defence that took them into attack on many occasions. Uh, Launceston, I feel, uh, looked at this uh, situation during the game but uh, they reverted to Bailey in the last quarter and once again were given a uh, clear warning that if he has continued to play there that they're going to be in, in dire straits against top teams. I don't know what you thought yesterday, Graham, but I, I had the feeling that Bailey on camera there now what didn't appear to be 100% fit. He looked as if he was about a yard short of his normal pace. Well, I don't think so, Ray. I right. feel that uh, it was due uh, entirely to the Spearman. pressure that Spearman played. Now, Spearman uh, started off by playing him from in front uh, Bailey uh, didn't have a great deal of room. He was pushed uh, into a situation where he was way out of position up towards the centre line trying to get the front position from Spearman. And uh, then Spearman, when the ball was being delivered long uh, to Bailey, and uh, I feel these teammates contributed greatly to this, although they didn't have many other avenues to go through, they continually pushed the ball long to Bailey to the key position, only to find the strength of uh, Spearman a little bit too much. He was one of the uh, North's great players there. Yesterday was Elmer. Uh, he figured, uh, he gave him 120% effort yesterday, Elmer. Well, he's added a great deal of balance to the North back line, uh, Ray, and this is uh, one of the real strengths that's shown out in, in North's team this year. We've uh, seen over the years where their teamwork and their forward play has been one of their great yeah. factors in their victories. But the defence of North this year, where uh, they've uh, first of all started off with Elmer at full back, but now they've moved him out to the uh, half-back flank, was a great move, and he's got a lot of dash. He put the ball under his arm a couple of times yesterday and really tore through well, he had the centre. a ton of time, didn't he? And uh, delivered the ball accurately. And this is another good uh, part of his play, that he did uh, do well for uh, that, that part of North's... Uh, forward work. But and I thought Loon did a pretty good job for them at fullback too. Yes, uh, they, they, they did well in yeah. the north. Uh, Launceston on the other hand, Ray, uh, you know, they offered stiff opposition. They had some wonderful players too. I thought Woolley's duel in the yeah. centre with uh, the other boy there, Whitford, for north was uh, one of the highlights of the game and Woolley came out on top, although yes. Whitford did many good things. Yes, uh, Whitford was far more direct than Francis. Francis went the long way round, didn't he, well, on many occasions? he did, but I think uh, this is uh, where I, I feel Launceston are too short in their game, Ray. Yes. They, they tend to... Uh, uh, overuse handball and I believe it's due to the fact that they've got a very small uh, side and uh, even across half forward if you look at the, the players who are playing there they're very uh, small medium sized players yes. but, and I believe that they've got to uh, take a punt and move out one of their taller men mainly Thurlow or perhaps Parker play him in the key position and let Bailey and Krimiskosen or the other players that are playing on the flanks revolve around there and give them a chance to move and to exhibit their speed and their agility. I thought Krimiskosen played a very fine game for me. He had a lot of possessions yesterday. Krimiskosen's a wonderful footballer, mm. Ray, and uh, I uh, made comment about it and I still stick to it. I believe that Krimiskosen has to be played where the action is, where the ball is. Now, he played on the wing yesterday and did a tremendous job, although the boy that went on him, Harper, did a good job oh, too. Oh, my word. A uh, young word. boy with a future, but Krimiskosen is a great acquirer of the football and I believe that he should be run on the ball as a ruck rover or a centre man. Now, you know, the, the days of uh, playing uh, fellows in specialist position over here in Tasmania has gone by the boards. You've got to put your best players where the running uh, is and where the action is. Mm. And Kremerskothen has to be played, in my opinion, on the ball. There was a, a great duel yesterday there, particularly in the first half between Tony Brand and Neil Maynard, but as the game wore on, I thought Maynard became a little bit more effective. Well, he, was, he used his experience, and he was well supported by his players up the field. I thought Hill did a good job on one wing for them, 
And, uh, you know, uh, Maynard provided the fireworks for Brendan yeah. early yesterday. That was a tremendous clash. And uh, there was a lot of heat there and a lot of determination by both players yeah, to come out <laughs> the top men. And uh, they, they were really determined to have mm. the last say in the matter in the first quarter. And that, that provided a lot of interest. One player whom I thought deserves a tremendous amount of credit for North was that young Duncan. Uh, the big fellow, North of Unearthed, two or three young ruckmen. They're only uh, youngsters at the moment, 19 or 20, but this fellow showed a ton of courage in that first quarter, marked well and has a football brain, and I think he's got the makings of a pretty fair player. Well, I think that Duncan and Evans are, are going to be two of the fine players in the Northern Tasmanian Football League for many years to come, yeah. if we can hold them here, because it's exactly what you said. They've got not only height and skill, but they've got a brain. Yes. And they used it yesterday well against the big fellow, Burke. Burke was a, has been a good player for Launceston, but e Evans, uh, in particular, uh, used his brain to get the front position on uh, on the Big Berkey, and uh, they were responsible for giving North a confident start. Well, they got the ball away. There's one of the players who, who was a very constructive player for North, and that was Henderson. Uh, with Duncan and Evans winning in the ruck and getting the ball down to them, they were able to come away from the packs and create tremendous opportunities for the players up well, there. There's the other field. There we are, yes. Atkins and Henderson yeah. worked uh, beautifully, like a glove uh, for North, and uh, fitted in so well to the North running game and teamwork which we've seen over the years. North have got a luxury being able to play Shane Young close up on the forward line. Well I don't know whether Shane was 100% fit. He's one player that was under a bit of a cloud in my opinion. I watched him closely and he did uh, show signs of having a leg injury but he was still dangerous enough to uh, get two or three goals for North when they really need them under pressure. Let's have a look at Launceston. They've been under two pressure games the last two weeks. Scottsdale and North and the scoreboard shows that they've failed on both occasions. Is there a query against them now to, cl to close uh, tackling teams? Not so much close tackling, Ray, but I think they've got to just analyse their side a bit better, make a couple of positional changes, and be more direct with their game. Mm -hmm. I feel that they uh, are inclined to go flankwise too much and play the wings uh, too much, and, and I, I believe that Crimiscopin is one of the reasons why they're playing through him on a wing. Uh, when they're coming off half back, instead of going directly down towards the forward line, they're inclined to crisscross uh, across the ground uh, to use uh, uh, their wingman rather than go direct. And, uh, and look, they're a good side, Launceston. Uh, you know, North beat them yesterday and always had them under control. But Launceston have got great skills, but they've got to be more direct. But then again, full marks to North. They've lost a lot of their players from last year. They are the Titan holders, and judging on their form, the way they can rise to the occasion, they'll win it again this year. Well, they've just got the uh, zest and... Uh, you know, they've spring, got character. They've got zest and spring of young legs. Now, uh, mm -hmm. like players like Maynard and, uh, say, Billy Hill, uh, Mackerel's a good player. He's a, a link player, uh, Stephen, but uh, he does a lot of damage with the ball. Uh, if Maynard and Jordan uh, can be given the ball one out, then North are going to be a real threat. Sure. And they certainly displayed yesterday, on that display yesterday, uh, they're going to be right up there in, in very strong contention in September, right? Their pride will carry them a long way, won't it? Well, all clubs have got pride, but uh, North, uh, North have got a lot going for them. They really have. Final score yesterday at Windsor Park saw North Launceston 13-11-89 to, Lon to Launceston 8-14-62. Let's see some highlights, edited highlights from the game. Ron Duncan takes a fine mark. From him, coming in towards the full forward line, players set themselves again. Oh, good mark. I say that's going to be paid. A good mark to Duncan of the North Launceston side. And converts from a tight angle. There's a kick from him, right foot drop. One kick looks good to me, yeah. First major on the ball to the Robins. Strong mark here by Stephen Mackerel. And there they go, getting out of trouble. Looking for Mackerel out the wall centre wing position. Oh, beautifully positioned himself. Duncan again, great mark. Coming out towards the Henderson direction again. Oh, a good mark from behind the back, young Ron Duncan. Neil Maynard and Tony Brand providing some fireworks for the crowd. Steen Kremerskoven, strong mark. Great mark, Kremerskoven. And again. Close to the boundary line, Kremerskoven. Great mark, Steen Kremerskoven. Good mark here to Robert Burke. Kick is a good one, up towards the centre. Oh, Burke again, brings down a beauty. Plenty Darren Davies makes no mistake with this strong mark. Here towards the half forward line, setting themselves. Davies brings down a nice mark for Launceston. The former Clarence player, Henderson, shows his aerial ability. Is a good one too, towards the centre of the ground. Oh, fine mark, Henderson. 
Now he's a fine the passage of play here by the Blues, finds Burke. Towards the uh, half-forward line, coming out there with Hillis, takes the mark, hand pass it to Cook, Launceston going forward, a good passage of play. Cook looking for Burke upfield, and a lovely pass finds uh, Brian Burke, but finds Robert Burke, taking the mark, about 35 metres out from goal on a 45 degree angle. Burke and he kicks in. a badly needed Looks goal. The ball. Looks very good off the boot. Straight through, great goal, Robert Burke. Francis Woolley, great mark. Picked up and kicked out towards half back line, and Woolley went very high to take a nice mark. Patrick Bailey here from centre half forward kicks a good goal. Looks good off the boot, and it is good according to the umpire, and that's a, a, a badly needed goal to the Blues. Fine teamwork here by the Robins. Enables Shane Young to goal easily. He doesn't waste any time. Driving the ball up towards the full forward line. Taken here by Duncan. Duncan hand passes to Shane Young. Young runs into an open goal and a quick reply there to the Robins. Neil Maynard stands his ground and takes a strong mark. Oh, good mark. Strong mark, Maynard. Loon, a great mark in defence for North. Kick is a good one too. Going up towards the edge of the square. Oh, it's, oh great mark. Loon has brought down a beauty. Another fine passage of play here by North, capped off by a great goal to Harper. Here's a chance for Shane Young. Looks for the board up finds Harper. Harper takes the mark, doesn't waste any time, runs into an open goal, and bangs through a great goal to the Robins. A lone effort here by Crimis Gothen, and the goal of the match to that stage. Coming up towards the broadcast in the area where Christine Crimis Gothen picks up. There's a left foot kick from Crimis Gothen. It's a magnificent kick. A great goal. Larry Jordan, ever the opportunist, goals for the Robins. Nobody able to take the mark, but it's been picked up by Shane Young. Gets the hand pass to Jordan, and there's the dangerous Jordan has done it again. Francis Woolley, again, strong in the air. Here it goes, left foot drop, punt kick, and a good one. Coming up towards half back. Oh, magnificent mark taken by Woolley. In the park yesterday, Ray, and the goal kickers in that game were for the uh, North Launceston side. Three goals to Jordan and uh, Shane Young from the pocket, and two goals to Neil Maynard. And for the Launceston side, two to Patrick Bailey uh, and Thurlow and Cremis Gothen. They were the major goal kickers. And the better players uh, for North, I said, thought Elmer, Spearman, Whitford, Atkins and Henderson. Very even side though, wasn't it? A very good mm. side, Ray. He could have probably included um, you know, Marsh and a mm. couple of others, but... Uh, for Launceston, uh, Davies, uh, who was an outstanding player, I thought. Cremis Gotham, Woolley, Stoward and Lucas. And your three, two and ones? I gave three votes to uh, Davies for a very competent display uh, for a young player in the Launceston side. He gave a tremendous exhibition yesterday. I gave two to Todd Spearman for his performance in nullifying a very fine player in Bailey and also one to Elmer for his uh, exhibition on the halfback flank. Pleased to see that three, two and one as it is there, uh, Graham, because they're all very young players. I think that all nearly be under 20. Well, you know, we've, we have mentioned so far this season that one of the highlights, as far as I'm concerned, is the uh, introduction to all teams yes. of the young players uh, to football. And I think it's magnificent and I think it's added a lot of interest to the competition. You weren't able to comment too much on Darren Davies, but uh, he is a very, very fine young player. Yes, I saw his game against City South uh, two weeks ago. Ray and I was very impressed with his uh, talent and uh, his coolness under pressure and also the fact that he disposes of the ball in an excellent manner and he's uh, direct with his football. There's another part of his game I like, and he's got a lot of guts. He's got a lot of fire in him. Well, we've got a letter here. Kurt Lonceston. Here we saw the Red Legs 2016, 136, defeating East Launceston 12-11-85. You can see in the, it was in the second half that City came away. At half time, they trailed by nine points, but then the inexperience and the lack of uh, physique in some of the East Launceston players started to tell, and they wilted badly in that second half to go down uh, very comfortably. City South 2016-136, to East Launceston 12 13 85. The major goal kickers for the Red Legs were Bays, who kicked five, Stephen Sh Shane Shepherd, who kicked three, and Kenny Beaumont, three, and Shane Lovell and Michael Gibbons for East Launceston kicked two each. The better players for City South were Glenn Shepherd, Haightley, Proctor, Tubb, and Beaumont, and for East Launceston, Jenkins, Fox, Howell, Gutwin, and Jones. The clash between Scottsdale and Georgetown. Here, once again, we saw Scottsdale run out very comfortable winners. It was Scottsdale 22-18, 150, defeating Georgetown 11-6-72. Now the major goal kickers for uh, as you, the scoreboard there will tell the story. At halftime, Georgetown were within reach. 28 points difference over Scottsdale, but then the magpie machine, as they have done over recent weeks, went into top gear in that second half, and they ran out very comfortable winners indeed. The major goal kickers for Scottsdale were Philip Bennett, who kicked seven, Danny Hall, four, Coniston and Dennis, three each, and for Georgetown, Nadler, Bannon and Pafaro, two each. The better players for Scottsdale were Dennis, Coniston, Bennett, Hill and Wilson in a very even side, whilst for Georgetown their better players were Nadler, Garwood, Eastman, McDonald and O'Keefe. 
and 3-2 in one in that game, saw 3 to Jamie Dennis of Scottsdale, who's having a wonderful season, again. Mark Coniston of Scottsdale scored two, and Philip Bennett of Scottsdale won. Launceston versus Deloraine, and here a new NTFA goal kicking record to Malcolm Atkins, who kicked 16 goals in Launceston's score of 46-18, 294, to Deloraine, 10-11, 71. That scoreboard will tell the whole story, but 56 goals were kicked in, in yesterday's game. Uh, the goal kickers were Malcolm Atkins, who kicked 16, a new NTFA and also a Launceston club record. The previous record was actually was held by Ted Gleeson, the former North Launceston full forward, and uh, he's been in the record books for a long, long time, but now the name of Malcolm Atkins goes in and replacing Ted. Uh, Paul Ellis kicked 7, Todd Lewis 5, Cook and Tremor Scotham kicked 4 each, when everybody uh, kicked a goal for Launceston yesterday, Walsh for Deloraine, Ian Donaghy, a fine effort by the captain and coach, he kicked 4, and Singline 3. Better players for Launceston were Ellis, Atkins, Woolley, Curran, Burke, Cook, and you can name the whole 18, whilst for Deloraine, their better players were Howe, Donaghy, Singline, Gurr, and Aylett. And 3 2 and 1 saw 3 to Malcolm Atkins of Launceston, 2 to Paul Ellis of Launceston, and 1 to Michael Cook of Launceston. Our match of the day was a classic performance. Summary, it's a very, very uh, sincere welcome to Stephen Hoyle. How are you, Steve? Yes, thanks, Ray. Very good. Good game? It was a very entertaining game, Ray. Uh, unfortunately, there was only 850 people there. Which I thought there would have been more than that. The match of the day, we really expected to get a top crowd, but um, that's the way it was. Whether the weather turned a few people off, I don't know, but um, there's always a lot of car space up at City, so why the people don't come along and uh, see the top-class game such as this one, uh, I really don't know. Well, Launceston got the jump on, on the Red Leaves, but they couldn't hold it. No, Launceston started off very well, mainly, I think, through... Um, Darren Davies getting the ball out of the centre with some long kicks. Um, he got it down quite often, and here you see Atkins, who was a dominant player in that first quarter, carried on from last week when he kicked 16 goals. But um, later in the day, he faded out. But for a start, Davies, as I said, really dominated, got the ball out, and along with uh, Frank Woolley, um, Launceston were right in the game, and they just kicked goals. And uh, for the first 10 minutes, City... They didn't get the ball across the centre line, and uh, eventually when they did, they got it down and they goaled. But um, Burke, another good player for Launceston early, but died out during the middle stages of the game after he received a hand injury. Um, this allowed uh, uh, Trevor Marson to get on top in the ruck, is that correct? Yes, Trevor played quite well yesterday, first game back after two or three weeks out with an injury. And um, it's uh, a game where they, in the tapping, in the centre and around the ground, I thought that probably Trevor shaded uh, Berkey, but they both played wide of each other uh, in general ground mm -hmm. play, and Burke took a lot of telling marks in Launceston's back line, which um, they certainly needed at various stages. But with Marson winning in the ruck, he brings those smaller, talented players of City South into the game, notably the Shepherds and uh, uh, Jarman I had in there yesterday. Uh, yes. Was this one of the <coughs> major influences behind City finishing on so well in the second half? Possibly, Ray, but um, a lot of Trevor's uh, taps were sharked by Frank Woolley. Um, played a brilliant game, yes. and uh, probably 60% of the taps that Trevor got out, um, they were sharked by Frank. Uh, Beaumont, he played well at stages, but wasn't in the game for the full 100 minutes, and uh, really it was a, a game where a lot of City players put in for a while and then sort of went missing. I thought their, their, their most influential player in that first half, I think he was greening at centre-half back, Played very well yesterday, John Greening. Um, the only thing about it, Ray, was a little bit of handball that went astray. Uh, John has the tendency, I think, to get the ball and take off with it, but then, for some reason, it brings himself undone at times because he changes direction with the ball. And yesterday, some of the handballs, not only from John, but some of the other city backmen, uh, it just went astray because they were putting it down to the, the player's feet or too far out in front. And at times, the handball was only going two or three feet to the, uh, or a metre to uh, their players. And yeah, it wasn't now. constructive. Uh, here you see Greening racing away with the ball and they're uh, going for a long hand yeah, He follows up here. It's quite a good passage of play, but uh, as you see, um, sometimes it does come undone. Uh, Malcolm Atkins, record goal kicker the previous week with 16 goals. Looked as if he was going to carry on straight away in that oh. first quarter. But full marks to Young Bassett. Came back very well, Steve. Yes, in the first quarter, um, Atkins was right on top. Uh, well supported by Alison O'Donoghue down there in the forward line. But Atkins led very well, very strong marking, and uh, completely over eclipsed Bassett in the first quarter. But after that, Bassett came right back and um, 
really finished all over Atkins in the day. Uh, some strong marking and uh, clever punching from behind. Paul O'Donoghue, back for his first game with the Blues? Well, Paul, uh, I probably thought that uh, it may not have been a good move from Launceston's part, but yesterday I thought that Paul all day put in, which some of the Launceston players didn't. They sort of went missing a couple of their players that should bring other players in. But Paul took marks in the forward line um, at one stage. He uh, marked, played on very quickly and got the ball over to Paul Ellison and goal resulted. And uh, when he was in the back line, he held up City in many occasions. How do you see both <coughs> sides, Stephen? I think both sides will end up in the top four. Uh, I know we have top five this mm. year, but they will be in the top four, maybe the top three. I think that Longford is a bit of a dark horse. Um, had a little bit of a doubt about Launceston at times. The last time these two sides met, I know that uh, Launceston beat City, but um, as I said on a, another station on yesterday, Ray, I thought that City would win mainly because they had a ruckman yesterday who was prepared to run and chase and mm. contest against Burke and Trevor Marson, and also they had a full forward, which in the first game, uh, both those positions were lacking. Well, of course, they got Rod Thomas to come back in too after he serves his suspension. Yes, he got Tomo, he's got another five to go, so he, he was telling me yesterday. But uh, in the first game against Launceston, uh, really, uh, Tomo just wasn't in the race. Yeah, but he's a proven performance. He is, it? yes, for sure. But um, he'll have to earn his game back now, the way Trevor Marson's game, because Trevor is a very capable footballer. Well, it's not, uh, most sides are screaming out for one ruckman. City are going to be very lucky coming to the final series with two. Well, they've got to, and then, uh, of course, there's young Proctor, who didn't take the field yesterday, sat on the bench all day. Uh, only a young player, uh, 17 or 18 years of age, promising player, six feet four or five, so City have got plenty of height there in the ruckman. Yeah, to me, he's probably the most promising player of all the city, uh, City's outstanding youngsters. Yes. Because he's a big man, he's a, he'll be a late developer. Yes, he'll be a late developer. Um, uh, the play, young player that I like up there at the moment is young Egan, Jared Egan. Yes, uh, fine. Uh, played off the bench yesterday and kicked a couple of goals and really is a fine for City. A fine group of young players about it, isn't it? There's a lot of players up there at the moment that uh, in the next two or three years will make real names for themselves. OK, Steve, let's now have a look at some of the edited highlights from yesterday's match up there at Youngtown, the clash between City South and Launceston. A clever mark by Launceston's Darren Davies. A big player start to set themselves, getting high, nearly bringing the mark down. Oh, great mark. Taken here for Launceston by Darren Davies. Good rough work and a nice pass. Sees Malcolm Atkins, mark and goal for Launceston. Intercepted though by Woolley. Woolley burst out of the centre for Launceston, directing part towards the full forward line. Coming out and taking the mark. Great mark, Malcolm Atkins. Jared Egan snaps truly for City South. Towards the full forward line for City South. And a player there grabbed the, uh, grabbed the ball. And a great shot there, put through by the, for the red leg. A quick reply by Malcolm Atkins for the Blues. Francis Woolley. He goes up towards centre half forward, dropping short. Lewis or drop he well should have taken. However, he's got plenty of support there in Stoward. Stoward out here towards the half forward line. Malcolm Atkins gathers in the loose ball, swings onto his left boot, up towards the full forward line. A lovely snap by Malcolm Atkins. Another goal to the Blues. City South, centre half forward Gary Westwood, Mark Strongly. But it's a good kick up towards the centre half forward. We're behind Westwood. Hately to Bayes and the young full forward marks and goals. The full forward line, Bayes once again brings it down. Ever the opportunist, Paul Ellis, the goals for Launceston. Cook on who is left out towards centre half forward. Here's a chance for Launceston through Lewis. Has he got the better pace to shrug off Tubb? Here's a chance once again backed up here by, uh, by Ellis. Ellis runs into an open goal and kicks with his left boot. And there's a quick reply to the Blues. Strong mark to Malcolm Atkins over two opponents. Gets left boot the ball up towards the full forward line behind was Atkins, Atkins takes the beautiful mark. City full forward, Philip Bayes, marks sensationally and kicks truly. With his right foot up towards the full forward line, behind Bayes, brings down a beauty. Paul O'Donoghue, a fine pressure mark. Once again, looking for Kremitz chosen. Look at the pace of the young wingman as he puts right foot the ball, up towards the half forward line, great mark, taken by Paul O'Donoghue. Harris marks well in defence for Launceston. Towards centre half forward, the City South window attack, and Harris brings down a nice mark for the Blues in defence. Tony Hately kicks a fine goal for City. Hately springs on the loose ball, kicks the ball up towards the full forward line. Right in the goal square was Bayes, but he did good judgment, let the ball go through, and that's a goal to Hately and City South. Likewise, Lewis kicks a magnificent goal for Launceston. 45 degree angle. There's a swing around, the breeze takes the ball off. Great goal, Todd Lewis. Egan snaps truly for City. From Westwood. Moyer's kick is going right up towards the full forward line. Off the hands of the back, it comes towards Egan. Egan runs into an open goal for the Red Legs and puts through another one for City South. City hit the front with this long goal by Gary Westwood. Oh, the kick is a good one. 
Kick is an excellent one. Great goal, Gary Westwood. Yesterday, the City South, Philip Bays at full forward ended up with four goals. Darren Shepherd and uh, Jared Egan ended up with three each. For Launceston, the main goal kickers, Paul Ellis in the forward pocket with four, and Michael Cook around the ground with three. Best players, I thought that John Groening for City South was their best player. Uh, after the first quarter, after he settled down, with the, got rid of the handball, he was a very effective player. Cario in the back pocket, even though he had a go at me yesterday about a few things, <laughs> um, he, he did play well. Bassett, I thought, was a fine defender. Marson, a very constructive ruckman and took timely marks around the ground. Tud and Hadley were the best of the rest. For Launceston, Francis Woolley, an outstanding game. Michael Cook never gave up. Brand, as we know, a top defender. Stoward, I thought that uh, even though he went off the ground at one stage, I thought with his tackling, fierce determination all day, he did a deserved a mention. Burke, for a lot of good marks around the ground, held up City time and time again. And Dar Darren Davies, probably for his first half effort. Three, two, and one. The three, two, and one. Francis Woolley, as I said, for an outstanding game, never gave up and used the, the kicks that he got from the centre to great advantage. Two to John Groening, the centre half back for City, uh, wasn't beaten all day, and uh, one to John Cario in the back pocket. Steve, just before you go, it's into your face. Selector, believe a couple of bad injuries are in the squad? A uh, couple of injuries, Ray, that we've lost Ricky Young today out of the squad. He's, I believe, going into hospital for cartilage operation this afternoon, and um, Patrick Barley. There's another one heading up to the hospital for a finger examination, and there are quite a few that are um, pretty tender at the moment, but we've got another fortnight to go, so yeah. things are not as bad as what they seem. be a big series down there. Will be, and we're looking forward to the encounter. Thanks very much, Steve. Hope to see you back uh, sometime throughout the year again. OK, Ray. And our commentator is Graham Wilkerson. Yes, Ray. Well, at the Windsor Park yesterday, uh, Launceston took a very decisive uh, leapfrog over the Magpies on the Premiership ladder with their win to move into second place and they do uh, loom as a major threat as far as I'm concerned for this year's Premiership. Uh, they've got a very balanced side uh, Launceston and although the Magpie Magic uh, ap appeared in the third quarter to threaten danger for Launceston, uh, really the Blues had uh, most of the answers for the whole day and uh, this is the problem that I see for Scottsdale is that they uh, lack uh, probably key players and uh, they're having to use uh, two of their brilliant uh, footballers in Coniston and uh, the ageing Nichols as ruck rovers to give support to their side around the ground to get kick power and also a chance of scoring opportunities up forward. And although Bennett is a capable full forward, uh, they lack another player on the forward line uh, with power to give support to him. And uh, yesterday, uh, this was most evident in the first quarter where Launceston were kicking against the breeze uh, and yet they held uh, the uh, Lon uh, Scottsdale team to a one-point advantage at quarter time, and they did this because their half-back line, uh, they had all the uh, answers there. Brand, Scott and Davies uh, played excellent football, in particular Scott. He was given a job to do yesterday, and uh, he did it in a very workmanlike uh, fashion. He wasn't a uh, star. He wasn't uh, really prominent, but he was in the background uh, trying to curb Coniston and Nichols, and he did this quite effectively. And with Davies providing the dash from the half-back line, the Blues had many scoring opportunities uh, to convert uh, in that first quarter. And uh, had they kicked a bit more accurately, uh, unfortunately it was a cross breeze across the face of goal, taking the ball and making it difficult to uh, score at that end. Uh, Launceston would have had a, really a lead at, uh, of a greater substance at quarter time. But in the second quarter... Uh, they really uh, took on the uh, Magpies and uh, ruffled the feathers a bit and uh, got away with a four-goal lead by uh, half-time. And although Elliott was a very good player and Gillespie and Kerrison uh, did well for the, the Magpies to limit Launceston, uh, really they looked uh, a powerful uh, combination, the Blues. And uh, I thought that uh, the uh, player, though, Donahue, now this fellow who's come back into the uh, Launceston side to uh, give a bit of support, and uh, where he is valuable is his uh, great experience and his professionalism because uh, Donahue yesterday uh, was a dangerous player for Launceston. He uh, gave great support to Atkins in the forward area, but he also uh, went to the uh, defence when it was required and used his uh, rucking capabilities on occasions around the ground. And it was a complete game from O'Donoghue yesterday and one which uh, was most valuable for Launceston uh, in the manner in which he went about his work. Uh, the uh, half-time scores with uh, Launceston leading by four goals, 
uh, really uh, gave uh, the view that uh, they had the game well and truly in hand. And uh, when they came out after half time and kicked two quick goals, uh, there were not many people, I feel, at the ground thought that uh, Scottsdale could get back into it. But uh, Hall uh, and Martin, who'd been well held by uh, Parker, uh, lifted their workload. And uh, with their emergence and their uh, strength and uh, you know, uh, endeavour, they fed the ball out and uh, a lot of the Scottsdale players came well into the, uh, the game. I thought that Coniston and in particular Nichols in this quarter and Lethberg, three of the real old hands for Scottsdale, really showed their capabilities. And uh, this is the problem uh, that they have got. Uh, unless these players can maintain this type of play for Scottsdale and become the real driving force of the Magpies, to feed off opportunities for their uh, lesser players in the side on ability and probably skills, uh, Scottsdale won't be able to kick a winning score against the top sides. Now Coniston is one player who's got a tremendous responsibility to his club because he's one of the magic players of the competition and yet uh, he doesn't really uh, expend uh, his full uh, you know, capabilities for the whole game and yet when he does this fellow he's an absolutely brilliant uh, footballer and a delight to watch. His goal that put Scottsdale in front at the end of the third quarter was a real bit of magpie magic. He uh, took a mark on the uh, forward flank and with the siren sounding uh, he took his kick and with uh, great skill threaded it through the goals to give uh, Scottsdale the lead. And uh, it was a, an excellent comeback by Scottsdale and one which really shook uh, the uh, Launceston team. And this is the danger for Launceston. Uh, I feel that Launceston, while they've got a free-flowing game going and uh, with the balance of their team, are a great side. But uh, the real uh, threat for them is pressure. Now, when Scottsdale applied the pressure in the third quarter, a lot of the uh, Launceston players went missing and uh, didn't provide the drive that the, and the endeavour that they had uh, supplied earlier in the day. And uh, really, it took a concerted effort in the last quarter uh, to uh, swing the game back in their, in their favour. Uh, the last quarter actually went for about 15 minutes before a goal was scored, uh, with Scottsdale desperately striving for victory, but the Blues were just that little bit steadier, and with players like Cremascofen and Woolley across the centre line uh, doing a lot of damage, and Cremascofen in particular yesterday, Ray... He played four uh, quarters of great football, didn't he? Played some really great football, and uh, of course the highlight of the game was uh, an absolutely... Uh, super mark that he took on the, on the wing in front of the press box. He, uh, he brought the breath uh, clean out of my body and uh, nearly I went out the window. He, uh, it was a magic bit of football, a, a, a mark that the, the VFL had replayed time and time again because he uh, went up, got the boots on top of the shoulders and then was thrust uh, up towards the heavens and took an absolutely sky-scraping mark uh, which grained the applause of everybody on the ground and also the supporters. So uh, Cremascofen, we know his capabilities and uh, yesterday he exhibited them in a brilliant fashion. Well, he's one of the key, uh, the cogs in uh, Launceston's lineup because he, he, he has the, the uh, I think, the, uh, uh, the contract to move right across that half forward line. He goes from one wing to the other. He doesn't virtually play in a set position, does he? Yes, well, uh, I think that uh, earlier in the year I was of the opinion that while they're playing Crimiscope and out of the game, if the wing was of such that it, it kept the ball on one side of the yeah. ground, that it would be better for Cremascofen to have this capability, Ray. And certainly it paid its dividends yesterday because Cremascofen uh, was rarely out of the play mm. and uh, he's got such exciting uh, judgment when he's going for his marks and does such damage in that department, which is a bit foreign for a small player. You know, uh, the he's other... He's not all that short, though, uh, Wilkie, is he? He'd, he'd be 5'11". About 5'10", 5'11". Yes. Uh, but he's outmarking Ruckman, which is, mm. uh, you know, a bit outstanding for a, a small player. Uh, but I said that Launceston have got a very well-balanced team. With Bailey still to come back in? Bailey still to come back in. Lewis, to me, looks as though he needs a bit of work. And yes. I, I suggest that uh, he uh, has a close look at himself and because he's one of the vital cogs, mm. played very prominently early, but faded. And... and that's when the uh, other side's got started like, well and truly back into the game. You mentioned another player too, Terry Lucas, that's uh, uh, still to come back in. Yes, yeah, so, well, you know, they, they really have got a, an overall uh, situation where they'd be pretty confident. Uh, you look all the way down the centre of the ground and uh, around the flanks and they've got a pretty good balanced team. And Burke yesterday had no influence on the game due to his hand injury. And although Denny Hall, I thought, took the honours on the day, uh, Burke will become a more uh, damaging footballer in the competition when he regains his... Uh, 
proper use of his head. Final series uh, looming up to be a very, very good one indeed, isn't it? Certainly is, Ray. It looks to me uh, to be developing uh, three ways, but still, uh, <laughs> you know, you can't underestimate the right. great power of North and Scottsdale. Yeah. I'm certainly not saying that they won't be able to make uh, the grand final. Uh, they'll definitely contribute towards the final series and anything can happen on the one day. OK, let's have a look now at some of the edited highlights from yesterday's game uh, between Launceston and Scottsdale at uh, Launceston. McCrimmon to Cook and a great diving mark by the wingman. Todd Lewis got, hot, got very, very high. Francis Woolley's going through. Oh, a hand pass comes out here to McCrimmon. McCrimmon a short pass looking for Cook and finding that player. Great pass, great mark to Michael Cook. Another diving mark, this time to Paul O'Donoghue. Bounce uh, favours Ellis, gathers it in, puts left boot to ball, goes short looking for O'Donoghue, and he's taken the mark some 30 metres out from goal. Stallard to Atkins, then on to Burke, and a Launceston goal from the kick. Rodney Hill was well and truly behind, he goes on quickly looking for Burke. Claridge was caught asleep then, and uh, as were the other Scottsdale defenders, Left ball, snaps Cooley for the Magpies. Out of the packet goes, a snapshot for goal. Has it been put through? It has been by left ball again. Great mark, this time to Coniston of Scottsdale. Making it, oh, coming from behind. Magnificent mark there taken by Coniston. Seen Kremerskothen, and one of the many marks for the quarter. Claridge, Kremerskothen, great grab. Gillespie, Mark strongly for Scottsdale them in a game of snakes and ladders at the moment as the ball's kicked up towards set half forward and a great mark taken by Gillespie. There's the ball, knocked down by Claridge. Comes to Curran. Curran's left foot kick going high. Atkins front position and takes a strong mark in front of Hill. And Atkins made no mistake from the angle. In moves Atkins. It's a nice looking drop punt kick. The goal umpire looking very close to it. I think it's a great goal. It is. Lewis goals from a free kick. Todd Lewis a chance to put the Blues fourth on the board. There's the kick. It looks pretty good off the boot. Splits the middle. Through it goes. A great mark in defence by Gillespie. Has one bounce. Runs through the centre of the ground. Then kicks long. But Gillespie takes a fine diving mark. Great mark. It was the 20 minute mark of the second quarter before Scottsdale scored their second goal. Out wide. It's for Wilson. With the double L over to Kerrison. In turn finds McCarthy. He'll have a shot for goal. And he's put it through. A Launceston goal result. O'Donoghue marks strongly in the square. There's the kick, it's long. It's right into the teeth of goal. There's a mark somewhere. I think it might be O'Donoghue. Launceston with a good passage of play. Sure, yet another goal for an academy on that, that occasion. More, good mark. Oh, that should have been played. Comes down to the ground with a hand pass goes further away. Davies breaks one tackle, then two. Gets a hurry kick up towards centre wing position. The opportunity for McCrimmon. Breaks the tackle by Claridge. Does he run out of ground? No, he keeps the ball in, says the boundary umpire. Then goes on with play with a long kick up towards the full forward line. Looking for Atkins and fighting him. Atkins' chance to put the Blues seventh on the board. 30 metres out. Moves in and has put it right through the middle. No mistake about it at all. Ray at for the Launceston side. Atkins kick four. Burke two. Davies two. And for the Scottsdale side, Coniston and Bennett kick three apiece. Better players for Launceston, Kremerskothen, Davies, O'Donoghue, Atkins and Stoward. And for Scottsdale, Nichols, Gillespie, Coniston, Elliott and Kerrison. And I gave three votes to uh, Kremis Gotham for an enormous game yesterday, uh, great skills. I gave two votes to Paul Donoghue for a professional performance. And I gave one vote to Robert uh, Kerrison for Scottsdale. Greg Lethbull, quick one out of the pack. Now Ricky McCarthy, nice dodge, probably sort of kick, but through it goes. Now from the coast at West Park, Gala. Goals for Bernie. Ian Jones after a hand pass and Robert Stewart bangs one home. Ian Jones again. Good one this. And got flattened after he kicked it. And Brian Leader marks, runs, kicks, goal. First of two from Wayne Jaffray. No mistake. Here's the second. Last but not least, Kim Saltmarsh, girls at back.
Goal of the day, Ian Jones, great snapshot from the pocket, through it goes. Nichols. Mark Connison, screamer. Promising young player, Steen Premiscosa. Tim Gillespie, great defender. On the coast, Ricky Ratray. Former Cooey player, Robert Stewart. We mark this one, Brendan Sullivan. One-hander, Joe Bassoff. And finally the young star, Clay Cross. To the BFL shortly. Not a bad sort of mark. That's the mark of the day, in fact, Craig Cross of Burn. Well, yes, well, yesterday at Windsor Park, the clash between Longford and Launceston was for three and a half quarters a very, very even clash indeed. In the first term, Longford dominated the first ten minutes of the game and uh, they had a star on their forward line in Tim Chilcott who pulled in two uh, great marks and uh, kicked two goals. And 2-1-13 uh, led uh, no score so far as Launceston was concerned some ten minutes into the quarter and the Blues' uh, back line was put under pretty constant pressure. Uh, up the other end of the ground, when they did get the ball forward, Launceston were woefully inaccurate in front of goal. And uh, as they continued to do throughout the game, they missed a number of uh, pretty easy opportunities and some very easy tips, uh, set shots for goal. However, uh, they recovered somewhat, and uh, although uh, Chilcott was a big blow to the Longford side, going off oh, around about 20 minutes into that first term uh, with a, an injured leg, uh, uh, nevertheless, at quarter time, Longford had a 10-point uh, lead. In the second quarter, uh, Launceston, and talking to a couple of people down there, it seems to be a pattern of play that the, the Launceston coach uh, is trying to get into the side, and that's this zigzagging across the ground. And really, I thought throughout the first half yesterday, the Blues overdid this. They had possession of the football. They went from one side of the ground to the other, and, and let's face it, on Windsor Park, you can get lost doing that. It's such a big ground. And, and really, if a mistake was made, all it needed was uh, a mistake to be made, a possession to Longford and uh, a long kick, and they'd lost all the territory that three or four possessions of the football had made. So really, I think until the Blues can sort this problem out, uh, they're going to find themselves in a little bit of trouble in the games that uh, are to come. Paul Rainmouth was uh, the rock of Gibraltar at centre-half back for the Longford side and uh, stemmed many attacks and his uh, quick dashes and his strength put Longford into attack on countless occasions. One of the great battles of the day yesterday was the battle in the centre between Bruno Zalesco and Francis Woolley. Both players played wide of each other for much of the game and uh, contributed to their respective sides, but I thought on the day it was Francis Woolley with his excellent disposal of the football, his direct disposal, uh, which was the difference, and uh, he would have come out on top so far as uh, that particular clash was concerned. Launceston uh, had greater possession of the football in that second quarter and uh, they had a, about a nine point uh, lead or three point lead at one stage then two quick goals in the closing three minutes of the quarter saw the Tigers go in at half time with a nine point advantage. The start of the third term and it was Launceston that dominated the game at this stage and they looked to have their system a little bit more positive and they were playing generally more positive football they were using it to more advantage than they did in that first half. Um, despite that, Longford got two quick goals through uh, Dean Lawrence. Uh, one dribbled from about 30 metres out and went through for a major. Uh, and uh, Longford put themselves back into it. Launceston, again, their kicking was astray. They, in this quarter, the third term, kicked three goals six to the Tigers, two goals one, and nine scoring shots to three. Uh, but they still went in at three-quarter time with... Uh, just a two-point advantage. Indeed, that was the first time they led at a major break. The final quarter, uh, a nip-and-tuck affair for the first 15 minutes. Monty Grimer lifted his play in the ruck. Paul O'Donoghue, I might say, was a dominant and probably the dominant player on the ground yesterday. He took many, many marks around the ground uh, for most of the game. Uh, Robert Burke, obviously not fit. Um, he was rested on the back line, but O'Donoghue took uh, the great bulk of the work and uh, pressed forward and, and did a major and uh, mammoth job for the Blues yesterday. Um, the big blow for the Tigers uh, was Rainmouth going off with a leg injury in the last quarter and they seem to be in trouble with injuries with Chilcott, also with Rainmouth. 
and uh, Stephen Smythe, who could be fronting the tribunal uh, during the week. But the Blues finally put the foot on the accelerator, got their game together, and in the last 15 minutes went right away with the game. And uh, if I might just say that uh, Parker, the interchange player, came on, kicked two goals and gave a lot of mobility to the Blues forward line. So far as Longford are concerned, I think their problem is pace. They lack running players. And uh, really, with the style of football that is developing uh, this year and in years to come, they've really got to do something to try and find some uh, nippy, speedy men to counteract the players of Launceston, North Launceston, Scottsdale City South. Thanks very much, Rod. Let's see some edited highlights from that clash yesterday at Windsor Park between Launceston and Longford, as the final score indicates. Rainmouth to Chug, on to Chilcox to Mark Strongly, and kicks an easy goal. Goes forward, and a good mark taken in front for Longford by Chilcox. Baker to Smythe, again Chilcox proves too strong in the air and kicks his second goal. Right in towards an open goal, drives the ball up towards the edge of the goal square in front, Chilcox once again brings down a beauty. Gary Betts displays his aerial ability. Back position, Kremis gave and pushed out, but no, says the umpire, comes back where Howard... Uh, Tony Brand marks strongly in defence for Launceston. And a great mark by Tony Brand taken in defence. Tony Baker, a strong mark under pressure. Kicks long, Lewis from behind, can mark Baker in the middle. Lewis to Bailey and a courageous mark to Paul Ellis. Does the latter now goes to Bailey. He could almost score from here if he can uh, control the ball. There's a fight on behind play as Bailey runs in, kicks, and a great mark taken up on the forward line by Ellis. Stallard to Burke, and the big fellow scores a badly needed goal for the Blues. Line, but touch there, Burke takes the mark. Dakin scores a clever goal for the Tigers. Longford go forward, Pruer this time. No, he can't take the mark, it's spilt. Comes down the ground once again. Grimer, hand passes to Dakin, who runs into the open goal, and he's put this one through. Dunellen takes a great mark from which he goals. To kick it along, that he does, a beautiful looking kick. Who's over the back? No one, Dunellen! Stoward reads the play well and puts one through for the Blues. Thurlow now with the chance to drive the Blues forward. Atkins tries to mark it. Stoward over the back, runs into the open goal and bangs it home. Atkins pulls down a strong mark in the goal square. Atkins, Rainmouth over top and Atkins stands firm and takes a tremendous mark. Rolly Chug marks strongly in the last line of defence. Kick up towards Atkins. Chug takes a great mark. And it's on between Bailey and It's Howard. hard to believe no reports were made following the dust up here between Howard and Bailey. Atkins makes no mistake with the snap over his shoulder. Howard towards the heart. Atkins snaps and puts it through for a goal. What about this for a kick by Longford's Bruno Zalesco? Now, Zalesco, almost within kicking distance, has been known to kick the leather off on the odd occasion. There's the kick, it's a beautiful torpedo punt, it's sailing many a mile and straight through it goes. Monty Grimer pulls down a strong mark in the goal square. The kick is a good one, right into the teeth of goals, it's almost a Longford mark, it is to Monty Grimer. And then goals right on the siren. And the siren goes, puts it through. Stephen Hawley. Hi, Steve. Well, thanks, Ray. The ground well, was very heavy out there yesterday, wasn't it? Well, the ground was exceptionally heavy at Windsor Park yesterday. Very disappointing in the condition of the ground after being at York Park, York Park earlier in the day and seeing that ground where you could have kicked drop kicks. Mm -hmm. Wookie would have been proud to have kicked out there yesterday, but uh, heading down to Windsor Park and looking from the road, it was uh, dug up, uh, it was very heavy, and the players. Uh, even in the first quarter, they were falling over, slipping, and uh, just couldn't regain their feet. Launceston yesterday proved something to City that City really have got a long, long way to go before they're going to be a force this year. It's unfortunate because they showed a lot of promise early in the year, but uh, I think their expectations have uh, been carried away a little bit with what people have said, and now that they've been hit with three crushing defeats from North, Scottsdale, and now at the hands of Launceston, I really think that this morning up at Youngtown, they would have had to have sat down and really thought, where are we going? Well, on yesterday's performance, they won't be going past the elimination final for mine, and I think next week, they're up against Longford, and that will be a telling story, because it's the only team left in the five that's got to play uh, in the next couple of weeks, 
and if they get beaten by that, then their confidence will be down further than it is now. Where is it do you think the city has fallen down so badly in recent weeks, please? Hard to say exactly where, Ray, but their teamwork, they seem to be waiting, or they were yesterday, waiting for it to happen, whereas Launceston made it happen by being in front, and uh, their team play cities isn't what it should be. Their forwards are not as effective. They're playing from behind, and they've really got to pull themselves together, get in front, and learn that it's a team game not to wait. Uh, yesterday we saw a couple of players wait, uh, city defenders wait for the ball to slide along the ground for them, in top the Launceston players, Paul Ellis for example, and kick the great goal. Now you can't afford to wait in slippery conditions like this or on dry days. You've got to go in. And uh, yesterday Thomas uh, controlled the rushing duels but really had no effect on the game. Because a lot of his taps, um, a good one there to Darren Shepard early in the game, but a lot of his taps were only in close and were brushed away by the strong Launceston defenders. First quarter, um, Launceston opened up a break and it was only in the time on period when uh, Proctor and then Darren Shepard kicked goals that put City back into it with a bit of a show there and uh, really it, it was in the back of my mind then that gee, it's going to be more one side than what I thought it was because I did think that Launceston before the game would win probably by about 24, 25 points. Mm. Uh, Darren Shepard went off it just after the um, long interval and that was a big blow to City because he'd been giving, he and uh, Shane Shepard had been giving a lot of drive around the ground. But um, after he was carried from the ground with a back injury uh, on the stretcher, City more or less dropped their head for a short time and really allowed Launceston to take the game away from them. I thought one of the things, particularly in that first half, was the way Todd Lewis repeatedly found that space for himself and had plenty of time to, to look for players further upfield. Not only Todd, but Francis Woolley, the motivators, the big kick getters of Launceston, always seem to have plenty of space. They did, Ray, because they're, they're thinking what to do. They're thinking one and two kicks ahead of, uh, of play, whereas the City players are only thinking immediately of getting that ball. Uh, Lewis yesterday uh, often plays wide of packs and of players because uh, he knows, that, and so does his teammates, they know that once they've got the ball, Todd's out wide or Woolley's out wide taking those kicks and they drive it long or they look for position as we saw there. And there's a good player for them too, Targo. Young uh, Targo. Gave them tremendous drive on that outer wing. Yes, he played quite well yesterday. Uh, I've only, this is the second time mm. I've seen him and I uh, was very impressed with him. Thurlow at centre half yes. forward for Launceston played very well. And uh, Cook, uh, a mighty player for Launceston uh, around the packs. He never gave up, as did Stoud and uh, the old fellow at centre half back there, Baldy Brown, with his uh, <laughs> lovely haircut. He's uh, a rock in defence for them. McCrimmon, another good player. You could go right through the Launceston side, Ray, with good players. Yes, uh, oh, I just took a line of thought there for the, uh, for the moment. But uh, the fact that Thurlow. The MPFA are very lucky at the moment. They've got uh, some up-and-coming strong young players in Thurlow particularly. We've seen Mark Evers maturing for North Launceston. And Stephen Proctor was another player for uh, the City who did very well yesterday. Proctor, but they're only young players. They are. Uh, Thurlow, as we said, uh, played very well yesterday. Proctor was the only forward for City that looked like being in the game. Um, kicked five and really probably should have had six or seven, mm -hmm. missed one or two easy chances. Bayes was completely outpointed by Darren Davies yesterday and the only reason I didn't give Darren a wrap up in the best players was that the ball didn't go down there enough for him to get it enough. Every time it went he adapted much quicker and far better as did most of the Launceston players to the conditions. And I thought that Paul O'Donoghue took on the responsibility of being number one ruckman yesterday. He's having a wonderful season for probably his best over the last three or four years and he contested every issue yesterday and took some fine marks around the ground. Yes, he, uh, he took more marks around the ground than Thomas but in the rucking duels I thought that Thomas outpointed him but, but as you say Donoghue never gave up no. and really fought the game out and did a lot of hard work on the ground pushing the ball out from packs because the uh, heavy ground was on the ground quite a bit yesterday and uh, Donoghue who really played quite well. Yeah, I thought yesterday was one of Launceston's better, best performances because the City had a challenge in front of them uh, but they found Launceston just too strong for them. Far too strong Ray, um, probably a little bit disappointing for Kerry Sanders because even after that effort yesterday he really doesn't know how strong or how good his side is because they weren't put under the pressure that they no. should have been coming up so close to the final. Final score yesterday at Windsor Park saw Launceston 21-18, 144, the City South 11-9, Some highlights from the game. A strong mark by Tony Brand of Launceston. Ground conditions here extremely slippery. 
Thomas at centre half back. Kicks the ball, not all that great deal of distance. Great mark, Tony Brand. Ever the opportunist, Ken Beaumont, goals for City. Punched away, taken by Stoward. He twists and turns. Chance here for Shepard. Here it comes towards Beaumont. Beaumont from the half forward line runs into an open goal, puts boot to ball, and there's a goal with the red leg. Marcus Strong mark here by Todd Lewis. Drives the ball right up towards the full forward line behind. Great mark taken there for Launceston by Lewis, I think it is. Paul Ellis chips in for a goal to Launceston. Left boot. Who's winning the race for the ball? Atkins, no, he's unable to take the mark. Running into an open goal, though, is Ellis. Ellis picks up the loose ball and puts one through for the Blues. A great Darren passage of play here by the Blues. A good mark to Thurlow and another goal. Rather easily. And then in turn finds Todd Lewis in the centre of the ground. Now Lewis runs, gets around an opponent, goes to the long kick up forward towards Atkins, who marks. He's got a player running on. Thurlow, all alone, got the seat and takes a good mark. Patrick Bailey takes a great mark and he goals from the kick. Towards the edge of the 15 metre square. Oh, Bailey! Great mark! City South, after a lot of indirect play, finally found the big opening through Darren Shepherd. Bays, it's uh, half forward. Back comes the hand pass towards Shepherd. He's got to swing around a wide circle. Now he goes back towards Beaumont. Beaumont, twisting and turning, runs in from centre half forward, twists the turn again, long hand pass out here towards Shepherd. Shepherd now from 15 metres out, puts boot the ball, and finally. Puts the centre and a goal to the red leg. A good passage of play by the Blues results in a goal to forward Malcolm Atkins. Pass across to McCrimmon and the Blues are away and running as McCrimmon goes to centre half forward then drives long. Ah, oh, Lewis. Short passes on to Atkins all alone. Great play, Todd Lewis. Very unselfish. Atkins only. 15 metres out from goal, bangs it straight through the middle. Michael Cook, goals for the Blues. Boundary throw in right beside the behind post. Almost a free kick there, comes the Thurlow, couldn't get boots to ball. Michael Cook can now and puts it through. Gary Thomas Westwood pulls down back. a great mark. Now up to centre half forward. And almost a great mark. Yes, it is a great mark indeed to Westwood. Kick Beaumont kicks well. a badly needed goal for the Red Legs. Find Bay, chips in short. Beaumont. Beaumont on with play now from half forward. Kicks and puts it through. Ball find teamwork by the Blues and another goal. Play on as it's shot out now where Woolley goes for a short kick. Stout, oh, the chip's on. Over the top it comes. Malcolm Atkins runs into the open goal and that's very easy. Goal kickers from yesterday's round and um, Atkins with five. Cook, four, a great game. And Bailey, three. And I think I uh, omitted to say that a furlough either three, I think, that he ended up with. For City, a um, bit of a one-horse race in the forward line. Proctor with five and three to Beaumont. Better players? Better players, I thought that Cook, the four quarters of great football, uh, Brand, impassable at centre half forward, Scott, another good player on their back line, Woolley, as we know, continuing his great form, Stowart around the ground, and Malcolm Atkins, I thought, not only for his goal kicking, but the way he brought other players in with effective handball as well. City South, I thought none better than Shane Shepherd over four quarters, uh, Moyer, Hakeley, Beaumont, I thought probably played one of his better games this year. Proctor and Bygraves on the back line was about the only one that really applied himself for four quarters. Three to one. Three to Michael Cook for, as I said, a very good game. Uh, two to Tony Brand and one to Shane Shepherd. Well, City South win this. World records with Sandow Ballet on parade. Stephen Cummings works out and we meet the Bronski Beast.